This video is brought to you as part of the Paired Health Mobile Medical Care Educational Series. In this video, Paired Health Medical Director Dr. Mike Watson and Physician Assistant Jana Regan discuss situations when the providers conducting visits in the field, such as Jan, contact Dr. Watson for his input and expertise when there are questions or any uncertainty around a clinical decision. They also provide a few examples of specific situations where the provider in the field is expected to consult the MD oversight. Let's hear what they have to say. You know, I think providers, when they call their supervising physician, is something that comes up, um, you know, most every day. And um, a lot depends on the provider and their experience level with a certain diagnosis or certain treatment of a disease. The more experienced they are, the, you know, the less need they'll have to contact their supervising physician. Um, there are other situations um, that will occur during the encounter or during the history, the physical, the medical decision-making process um, that, would, that, a, that a provider would want to consult their supervising physician about. Um, areas that they maybe have little clinical experience in maybe unusual situations such as a rheumatoid arthritis patient with shortness of breath and dyspnea, or um, a young 21-year-old male with chest pain that looks like angina, although he has no risk factors, or a patient that was just recently discharged for pneumonia uh, and now has abdominal pain. Um, all these are situations that are a bit unusual and, and the provider may want to consult their supervising physician about. If there are certain treatment options like medications uh, that they maybe are unfamiliar with, new medications, maybe certain interactions, medication interactions or allergies that they haven't experienced before, um, some other medical decision-making um, aspects such as consultations. Uh, when do I consult a cardi cardiologist or are there social services or behavioral health services that may help this patient and if so, how to go about initiating that. Um, so different situations um, that would prompt a provider maybe to consult their uh, supervising uh, physician. But I think the main thing is, um, you know, if there's any question in the provider's mind or anything they're unsure of, go ahead and consult your supervising physician. It's the only way that you'll learn how to do things, and of course it's best for the patient, but um, it's the only way the provider will really gain that experience that they need as time goes on. What would you expect of the providers in a situation where they needed to speak with you but were unable to get into contact with you while with the patient? I think, I think you know, making sure that they can get back in touch with the patient. They have a very solid contact way to get back in touch. Make the best clinical decision they can at the time. And then when, the, when they do consult with their uh, uh, supervising physician, get back in touch with the patient if there's some further need to. When do I call my supervising physician? When do I call Dr. Watson? It's just like when you're in an office setting. Um, when I don't know the, the answer to a question a patient's asking me or if a problem, the clinical situation is um, something that I don't know the answer to or I, I need additional help or just some, sometimes just some reassurance on um, my thought process, if it's correct or not, I give him a call. And Dr. Watson's readily available. I usually am able to talk with him when I'm in the patient's home. But there are times when he's in a meeting or he's busy and I need to leave him a message. And then in that situation, I just um, you know, make the best clinical decision I can with the patient. And um, I make sure I can get in touch with the patient because if I'm leaving their home and I need to follow up on something, I need to make sure I have good contact information and the patient's gonna get, I can get in touch with the patient. Um, and that seems to have worked well so far. There have been situations when I've gone out and assessed a clinical situation and it's, um, it needs to be, the patient needs to go to the emergency room right then and we've called 911 from the field and that has worked out as well. In addition to reaching out to your MD oversight for assistance, are there ever times that you contact the referring case manager at the hospital for information on the patient? Yeah, so a lot of times, when I, um, 
When I first started, I was, um, sometimes I would try to get in touch, if I had questions about the patient, I would get, try to get in touch with the hospitalist or I'd try to get in touch with the referring case manager. But um, other times, you know, what, what's kind of been happening now is I, I'd rather review the notes um, from the, the hospital notes before I go out and then I'd like to see the patient myself and then find out if maybe those questions have been answered, maybe it wasn't um, documented in the, the hospital notes. So I'll wait and I see the patient and then I can um, get in touch with the referral if I need to. And there are situations where um, I don't know the answer to a question or I need um, follow-up from the hospital about a situation. And that um, usually works out to get in touch with the case manager. As you can see, there is constant communication between the field clinicians and the MD oversight, usually taking place on a daily basis. Maintaining this type of relationship has been very important in achieving exceptional outcomes for our program. Thanks for watching and please check out some of our other mobile medical care educational series video modules regarding a number of other scenarios that our infield clinicians encounter on a daily basis and how they have learned to deal with these situations through their experience in performing hundreds of home visits. Thank you for watching this segment of the Paired Health Mobile Medical Care Series. Remember to check out the rest of our series and much more at www.pairedhealth.com.